This is KCR, the sound of state. Just take a nice breath in. Exhale that breath. Just allow yourself now to relax more and more. Because from this moment in time, there's nothing, nothing of importance for you to do except relax. Hello, humans! Welcome to Scarlet Letter Show Season 4 Finale! Yeah! I hope everyone had a fun Thanksgiving. I know I haven't been super active online recently, but, you know, I needed some time to collect my thoughts and get all my stuff together. First of all, I want to express how grateful I am for all the love and support I've had for you from you all of this year. It makes my heart full knowing that I can bring something valuable to my community and inspire others. That's honestly so rewarding. And the end of every season, or in this case, the end of every year, is such a bittersweet moment. But I think the best is yet to come, people. And I'm ready for all the new and exciting opportunities that 2020 will bring yeah i feel motivated to make this grow and create more content outside of the studio so expect more to see more youtube videos more engagement on my socials and a brand new logo soon you yeah. and by the way yeah i'm open to hear your ideas suggestions or sponsorship proposals i'm always striving to improve and provide quality content for y'all so it's just me behind it all so if you Want to tell me something? Send me a message, leave a comment, tell me what you want to see on Scarlet Letter 2020. And now it's time to introduce my guest of the night, DJ John Colasso. Welcome to the show. Yo, what up, San Diego, uh, KCR Radio, what's going on? What's up? You you brought a guest tonight, right? I did. I got my boy, my main man, Omar Frosto. Yo, what's up, everybody? What's up? How do you guys feel about... 2019 coming to an end man it's been nuts you know it's been a roller coaster it's been a, great year. Uh, it's been a great year for sure lots of cool events you know lots of house music of course and uh that's it you know we're just excited for 2020 and uh you pretty much hit it on the head i think it's going to be a big year for all of us in the industry and uh in house music and we're just excited same <laughs> hashtag same and so tell me i want to oh my god i'm just so excited to have you here because i see you play at riches all the time you know like we're we're colleagues we're we're there and and you too like same. i see you guys yeah. so i want to know what is it that sparked your interest in djing and where was the first time you stepped behind the decks oh thank you uh scarlet it's honestly an honor to be here and uh especially for having both of us on the show so thank you for that and uh we really enjoy working with you uh you know at riches especially for les night uh, it's definitely the place to be on Thursday nights. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, DJing and how it all started for me personally, I was actually 15 years old. Uh, and so I got my first pair of turntables from the homie Martin Crespo, a.k.a. Pablo Neruda. He actually retired from DJing a few years back, but uh, he passed he passed the torch down. And uh, I, I had uh, uh, his original pair of uh, belt drive uh, turntables that couldn't keep keep a beat for the life of them. Uh, so I learned on those bad boys and uh, just been DJing ever since. Uh, I actually learned uh, to DJ and mix from a, a, a local legend you might know. His name's DJ Ideal. Yeah, uh, Tomas I Ideal had him Serrano. Here. Yeah. Oh, really? Right. So he's he's amazing. And uh, watching him over the years mix and and beat juggle and stuff like that, I learned a, a, a lot from him. And what about you? Um, I started a uh, uh, DJing uh, back in like. Jeez, like 2010. But I mean, the thing that got me into like DJing was more of uh, the first time I went to my first rave, you know, like first electronic event I went to, like it was it for me. Like I'm like, I love this type of music. Like um, when I went home, I was like right away, I downloaded like programs and I was just like trying to get learned, you know. What but event eventually, was it? Uh, it was like some event down in San Bernardino. It was like for the massive and it was like four clubs from Hollywood getting Whoa. together. And it was like, when nice. Fidget House was around and like... It's always that first rave that changes your whole life. Right. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> I mean, pretty much since then, you know, I've been started a DJ, but definitely Casanova has taught me like how to play on the Pioneers. Like if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be playing like out in like the clubs or in like bigger events. You know what I mean? So like, I'm really wow. thankful Thanks, for bro. Casanova and meeting him. Friendship Thanks, goals. Yeah, and mutual, man. Yeah, mutual. Definitely, so. so how do you know that you wanted to make this a career instead of just being a hobby for you? 
Well, Scarlett, uh, you know, it's it all started when I went to my first big uh, main festival, and that was uh, Monster Massive back in 2004. And so um, I saw uh, Judge Jules and a couple of uh, DJs on the lineup, Tall Paul, and these guys were just having such an amazing time on the stage and, you know, just creating beats and, you know, uh, putting out their vibes. And I just really felt that. And I felt that energy and, and just being there. Uh, in the middle of the dance floor while everyone else is vibing out to the music i was observing the djs and i thought to myself this is what i want to do with the rest of my life right here and right then and there i committed myself to music and uh i mentioned i got my turntables and i made it happen (laughs) that's beautiful and i actually want to talk about your mobile dj business because i can totally relate you're the founder of the wedding entertainment collective where you provide dj services event planning lighting photography videography that's pretty dope Tell me how you got that started. Thank you. Yes. So, um, you know, actually my my rock and, uh, um, you know, my wife, she's the one who kind of helped me, you know, uh, establish that business there. So uh, prior to being a full time DJ and producer and event organizer, uh, I was working in the corporate world. And my wife just saw how unhappy I was with the whole thing coming home day after day, just tired and, and you know, just uh, just over Soulless. the whole job. Soulless. Exactly. I was a robot. And um I just recall, you know, thinking to myself, this is not where I want to be in a few years. You know, the money is not what it's all about sometimes, you know, and uh, even though the money was good, uh, you know, it's not what it's about. And so my soul needed something more. My heart needed something more. And so my wife, you know, literally from one day to the next said, hey, you know what? I see how happy DJ makes you. I'm willing to put my whole entire credit line on the line. I'll buy you all your equipment, anything you need. Well, let's go to Guitar Center right now. I was like, all right, let's go. So we did. And and she bought all my equipment for me. uh, And then uh, we were able to start up the wedding business. And so we've been doing that now full time for over five years as well. That's super cool. And I looked at your setup and I like the simplicity of it because I would usually bring like a whole tea stand with different lights, like lasers and strobes. And and you have like your moving heads like those work. I like it. (laughs) They they work. You know, they they give enough show. Like, do you just have like two moving heads and then like your lasers? I like I saw. I like. Yeah. Yeah. Very minimalistic approach. You know, I think that uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, especially in the wedding business and and, and, um, private events, you know, we want to make it about the client. Right. And um, I think uh, a lot of DJs in that business tend to want to make it about themselves for lack of better words. So we try to keep it minimal. You know, um, sometimes I even DJ with an iPad and our stuff's all wireless and, you know, people love it. I'm off in the corner and, you know, we have bride and grooms and, and or other clients and they're the center of attention. But you're absolutely right. You know, we added a little, our, our club lighting. I think we're the only uh, wedding, you know, uh, uh, DJs and, and organizers that provide the moving heads in terms of... Uh, my dad has moving heads too. Oh, does? Okay, yeah, cool. My dad has a whole, like, he has a big setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, OG. He's, he's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, like, I started DJing. Like, I started getting involved when I was sixteen. I like Very I did cool. like hundreds of events, but I kind of like I don't know. I feel like I wasn't there anymore. I kind of grew out of it. Yeah. I mm-hmm. I felt that it was kind of repetitive because the customers always want the same thing. Right. They always want right. to hear the same like <laughs> top forties or like the eighties or whatever. You right. Know? right. How do you keep it interesting? So, uh, you know, uh, with my little twist, uh, I'm actually, I tell people uh, I'm, I specialize in Latin American weddings. So, you know, I add my own little twist to it. You know, sometimes they have me DJ, you know, deep house, you know, for the majority of the event, oh, which is nice. my forte. And it's great. You know, just kind of let me do my thing. And then, you know, a lot of the time I play a lot of Latin music and stuff, too. So uh, I really like to uh, go in the cumbia. Yeah. The cumbia is, oh, yeah. is where it's at. You I know? play that, too. Everything. It, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's synonymous with house music because, you know, the, the BPM is, is, yeah. is, is almost there. And, um, you know, it's just that, that, you know, that polka, you know, that old school polka, you know, be I, I mean, I really enjoy it, but it's great. Yeah. And it's funny because I always get people ask me because I know that I've, I've DJed for forever and they're like, oh, you should DJ at our events, like a, like a local like house or techno events. But it's such a different experience DJing like at a quinta or a wedding totally. than being in a club or a bar. Like, honestly, I can't handle that pressure. I can do a fuck. Oop. I can do a wedding. I, I messed myself up. I can do a wedding or any kids or anything. Yep, but yep. I don't know. I just, it's different because I'm never going to see those people again. Right, right. But right. here, I'm, all my friends are DJs. All my friends are producers. So I can't do it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for everyone, you know, but I, I definitely enjoy it. And I think yeah. the main thing to take away is uh, for me personally, you know, nothing beats like seeing like, that grooms and that bride's face when they're walking down the aisle and you can just tell it's real. I always you know? cry. It's like, <laughs> I'll admit, I, I, I tear up sometimes too and people come up to me and they're like, are you all right? I'm like, oh, I promise I'm a professional. Yeah. I just, 
You know, I, I, I really, yeah. I genuinely love seeing people happy and, and spreading that love. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I kind of miss it sometimes, but I think I'd rather interview DJs now. <laughs> it's like my thing now. It's a little more fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so what can I expect in the first half of the mix? Ah, uh, so first half of the mix, uh, we got the intro, which is uh, an original track produced by yours truly. And my main man, Omar Frost, so I actually just mastered it uh last week so, so cool. uh i'm i'm 80 percent happy with it i think it still needs a vocal but i really wanted to get that out there because it really has that uh you know old school acid house yeah, tribal man. vibe to it and it's a good intro for that uh that mini mix that we made for the show um you know i i think omar will agree that and i'm sure you'll agree that 20 minutes is kind of hard to tell a story you know so yeah we're able to- i know and sometimes like i have to cut it a little short because i feel that uh, what i value more is like this interaction like the the interview right. yeah but yeah. like i'll try yeah. to get the, the whole mix like i promise but i don't know i feel like oh. we're already past past time but no worries i think it's so important to get the story out there because right. like that's people right. can listen to your mix anywhere but mm-hmm. they can't really like know what's up with your life so yeah, that's right all right so i think Three. we're we're about to play your mix and we'll be back in 10 minutes to continue the interview so don't go anywhere people you're listening to kcr college radio the award-winning sound of state
Oh yeah. I feel like I'm in a carnival or something. <laughs> like New Year's, woo! You know, that, I feel that's like the goal. yeah. I feel like you know, like the people that pop those those things. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and then the just, confetti, like, the confetti like, yeah, yeah. That's what I imagine. That's playing in the background. <laughs> love it, love it. That's definitely the goal. You know, keep that high energy up and yeah. tell that story as as the mix progresses. What's up, people? Welcome back. Here we are. And before I do the interview, I gotta make some announcements. Are you a fan of podcasts? Make sure to tune in on KCR On Demand, the newest platform of entertainment from your radio host here at SDSU. Find us on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud at KCR College Radio. And lastly, Technish is having their blackout event tonight at Rich's Nightclub. So join us for a planetary industrial techno experience. It's right before 11 when you wear all black, which shouldn't be an issue if you listen to techno. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. So you to the uh, all black stereotype. And this is a 21 and up event. So have your IDs ready and come say hi because I'll be there, you know, like selling the shots. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right and she's great at it and we love Techniche by the way yeah that's shout great. out to the voice of Techniche Mixel Flix John Bilotti yep they're killing it so I'm back here with y'all and I'd like to know about the origins of the brand Revive San Diego where did the vision come from so that's an excellent question and I, I'd love to share that story uh, so Revive San Diego originated as Revive 619 many many moons ago Uh, it all started with uh, myself and DJ Pro K, Kenny Lytle. I'm oh, yeah, sure yeah. you're familiar with him. And so uh, he was uh, one of the first people that believed in the vision. And so we teamed up and, you know, we started throwing shows. Uh, our first show was at the Queen Bee Art and Cultural Center in North Park with Alma. Uh, she was the only person that gave us a chance. And uh, we threw our first show. We had over 600 people show up. And so after that, you know, the sky was the limit. We kept it going. And over the years, you know, uh, Kenny grew as an artist and, um, you know, uh, as a producer and he went on his own path and uh, we kept it going in his name and his honor. And uh, six years later, you know, we're, we're here now. We switched it up from uh, 619. Uh, I went from uh, Revive 619 to Revive SD and finally Revive San Diego. And the reason for that, it's because it's a lot easier for people to Google us and find us if they type in Revive San Diego. Oh, so. yeah. It makes sense. You know, I struggle with that because when people type Scarlet Letter, it's like the book. or, or Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to make my show um, pop out when they type Google. So when did you start getting involved in Revive? Uh, it was around like 2015 or yep. 14, 15. Yeah, 15. around 2015. I was we were doing uh, me and my homegirl, Jaina. We were doing a show with uh, Natsy and uh, um It was at House of Blues, and he we were DJing with her, and then we had met him there, and she had told us, oh, yeah, these are the DJs. They DJ house, and, uh, like, they are, like, in electronic music. <clears throat> and then uh, Cass is like, oh, you guys really? Yeah, okay. We got there, like, so early to set up and everything. He's like, go up on stage and play for, like, 30 minutes because there's, like, nobody here. I want to see what you guys got. And then me and my homegirl, we got up there, and we just started DJing. And ever since then, we, like, <laughs> started working together. And he's they really, killed it. They he's killed really it. like, the person that kind of, Gave us the opportunity to actually like play at the underground events That's and beautiful. like more like we were able to play at House of Blues and Hard Rock and. Hey man, I just showed you, I just showed you guys the door, man. Yeah, definitely, you guys uh, walked through it, dude. Yeah. That was dope. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you trying to accomplish with this brand? So, with Revive San Diego, we want to continue curating house music events. That's what we're known for. You know, we started throwing house music events, and uh, I will admit, you know, we did cross over three years ago to the mainstream side of the business, and we started producing events uh, down with uh, RMD Group, Event Vibe, to mention a few, Five Group, a couple of the of the larger production companies, and we started working with those guys, uh, you know, to promote, you know, uh, their already existing events and just kind of add to what they had going on. We had the opportunity to throw up our own stage, our own DJs and stuff like that, and that went really well. Um, and so like now we're just kind of returning back to our roots and our main goal is to grow our Thursday nights at Riches for Les. And so, you know, we really want to make that the staple night for house music, uh, all in San Diego. And, you know, the rumors out there are that, um, it is becoming that slowly, but surely, uh, we started there, uh, in, in January of 2017. So this is our third year in, 
Uh, and it's been a blessing to be there on Thursday nights. And like I mentioned, you know, to you off the air, we love the vibe. We love the energy. The production is amazing. I mean, all the staff, yes, uh, you know, oh R- Ryan, yeah. you know, oh. Lil Nella, uh, you know, uh, Nicole Lewis. She was, uh, you know, great and awesome enough to share, you know, her night with us. And so our main goal is just to keep those nights growing and, and, and grow those to be like the staple house music night on Thursday nights in San Diego. Definitely. So what's something that you would like to do different for Revive next year? Something that I would like to do different is focus more on talent and music uh, versus uh, the promotion aspect of it. Um, I think a lot of people that know me and, and know Revive uh, over the years, uh, we were more so uh, promote to play group. And, you know, I, I will admit that, you know, openly that when people worked with me, they knew they had to promote and sell tickets to play. Uh, now, though, you know, this year, you know, we, we kind of got rid of that whole entire credo and, you know, we're just booking artists that have productions under their belt and that are, are, are slowly climbing the charts on, you know, the, the different, you know, platforms, music platforms. And, uh, you know, our main goal is to bring better. I don't want to, sorry, that's not the word on the, uh, to bring more uh, versed, uh, you know, artists that are a little bit more submerged into production and, mm-hmm. and, you know, understand, you know, uh, uh, music uh, a little bit better. Instead of people that have a following only. Right. 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 Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes people that, might have a following might not be as good as someone that maybe (laughs) there's a lot to take into consideration also like putting that pressure on the artist that you need to bring this amount of people so right this, you know it's not their job yeah. you know we want our artists to focus on music solely that's it focus on on, on you know putting on a good show playing your tracks and, and and that's it you know and that vibe is what what we have at, at, at les every thursday night and i think that the djs that we have in there in rotation are, are bringing it and um you know our main plan for next year is to bring in more resident artists uh to come in and, and keep them in rotation and just uh you know have them you know play their music out to the crowds that's awesome so What do you think has been your biggest accomplishment with this brand? Uh, I would say that the biggest accomplishment with the Revive brand is is meeting and, and just making, you know, connections, lifelong connections with people like Omar, like yourself. You know, everyone's just amazing. Uh, you know, we really enjoy meeting talented people and being able to help them get on stage and and just spreading that that the music. You know, that's what it's about. Uh, you know, as I mentioned to you before, you know, we're really in this for the passion of it and the love of it you know i've been raving since i was nine you know i'm, I'm 34 now so i'm, I'm kind of dating myself but uh you know the, you know the main goal is just to keep, continue making connections and, and and that's it spreading music and love yeah do you want to add to that um well i mean definitely you know like what Castle, yeah definitely i mean it's everything he said is what revive is about you know bringing people together and meeting people talented people as well um, And as well as, like he was saying, to put on what he was talking about, Rich, is like putting people that have talent, you know. And, yeah, there's like, like you were saying, people have a lot of following, but they're like, how do you know they're going to pull that crowd in that, mm-hmm. in that actual location? And keep, and keep the vibe, right? I think it's all, right. it's, it's all about the vibe. Yeah, that's important. You know, the vibe's important for sure. So. so what do you think sets you apart from the rest? Uh, I think that what sets us apart from the rest, of, and I'll, ta- I'll take this out and then maybe you can kind of add a little bit. Uh, and my personal opinion is that, uh, you know, we don't when we go into something or into producing a unique event or show or or whether it's playing on stage or, you know, uh, curating a, a set for the night, uh, we put, you know, all our all into it, you know, our heart and soul, uh, you know, all of our finances, all of our time, all of our energy, uh, everything we can. And, you know, people I'm sure that are listening will know that that's worked with us in the past. You know, we try to stay organized and, you know, just, you know, keep it about the music and and all that good stuff. Um, and I think that, uh, for lack of better words, uh, you know, what sets us apart and that makes us stand out is that we do give opportunities to people that would not have opportunities um, if it weren't for, for us. And you're willing to help people too, like what yeah. you just did earlier. So yeah. I, exactly. I, I appreciate that, that you, you come in with like a good heart, like an open, mm-hmm. open mind. And we do it for the love of the music and the community. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're so, just mirror images of each other, you know, yeah. we just vibe off each other. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so what do you, is it that keeps you motivated? And you can answer too, like, what is it that keeps both of you motivated to continue on this path? I mean, for me, it's the music. I mean, I love music that much. Like, when I get in the studio and I start putting all, like, the sounds together and, you know, making melodies and, you know, beats, it just feels right to me. So that's what really motivates me, uh, the music, to continue to make it. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Frost will hit it right on the head. You know, it's just, you know, it's it's about the music. You know, at the end of the day, you know, just hearing those frequencies and feeling that bass and, you know, all that. Just, uh, I think people, you know, tend to underestimate the power of music. And, you know, when you listen to a certain song or a certain beat, you know, it puts you in this state of mind and consciousness that you, you don't know. And, you know, it can bring you back to a memory from when you were a child or you know, anything. And so music's always there, you know, no matter what anyone's going through, specifically if I'm, you know, feeling down in the dumps or, you know, if I'm not making music or mixing or something, I just, I, I don't, I don't feel like myself, you know? Uh, and, you know, my wife tells me all the time, she's like, dude, you need to get back on the decks. So I get in there and, and, you know, practice on your mix or whatever. And because she knows I'm feeling a little grumpy or whatever, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's just all about the music really, mm-hmm. you know? So I want to know, why did you change your name to John Colasso <laughs> from Casanova? Uh, I appreciate that question. So, um, you know, I originally started as Casanova, uh, spelled like the, you know, I guess like the yeah. the correct way, mm-hmm. um, because it was kind of like a nickname I acquired uh, back in the day. Um, you know, uh, my college years, I just you were uh, living it up. I was living it up. You know, I lived up to my name, and uh, you know, I just I, I I was a very friendly guy, and you know, I I always had some some good company with me pretty much everywhere I, I rolled up, and um, you know, people were just calling me, oh, you're Casanova, and so that just kind of stuck with me, and. I made a cool logo out of it, and, and you know, I, I did that, and then you know, I met my, my awesome wife, and I just, you know, out of respect for her, I switched it up to Casa Nuova, which was similar, but it's uh, that's Italian for new house music, yeah. and I rolled with that for a few years, and now I decided that it's time to graduate from that, and, you know, essentially, I'm now more mature now in, in, in my, you know, in my adventure and in my journey, and, uh, you know, John Colazzo has always been, you know, on, on the back of my mind, and, uh, I actually just uh, finished up a, a logo and, and all that, and I'll be releasing that soon uh, nice. before the new year. Nice. So, yeah. so you know, speaking of that, you've been mentioning your wife a lot. Besides the role that you play in the music industry, you're a husband and a father. And I think it's important to highlight this because this is like the less glamorous, glamorous part of yep. you know being an artist. So how are you able to balance all these roles? How do you make it work? So, you know, it all comes down to organizational skills, you know, and time management. Time management yeah. Like if I pull up my calendar on my phone, you'll see I literally live my entire life on a calendar, you know, from like, you know, waking up to brushing my teeth, to jumping in the shower, to feeding the baby or whatever, to spending quality time with loved ones. It's all down on a calendar, really. And I can't, you know, I, you know, I, I reiterate that to, you know, to those listeners out there. It's all about, you know, uh, planning stuff down, writing stuff down. And even if you're one of those people that execute well like your ideas and thoughts uh, i always find it, it works best for me even when i even when i know i'm going to do something tomorrow i still write it down whether it be in my phone or yeah, on a piece too. of paper you, if you, you saw know. my notes app it's full of stuff yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> that's awesome you have to you have to be organized yeah, you have to and so i think a lot of people have the idea that maybe you should stop doing something once you reach like a certain milestone or like an age or whatever because right? there's like social pressure to follow the norm right right do you ever get criticized for continuing your djing career uh to be frank no um no one's ever really criticized oh, me no, I, not you know. like family members that are like why are you doing this when you have family no no you oh, know okay. uh, you know that's some great. of my biggest fans you know are my family and, oh, and you know fantastic. my loved ones you, you, you know? got fortunate you have a wife that supports you and your yep. family dude that's that's awesome it, it, you got to have that support you know and um you know and i'm sure there's times where like you know my, my wife and stuff will probably get a little overwhelmed with where everything we have going on but low-key she loves it too you know and she like <laughs> she she loves you know events and revive and every time i'm down in the dumps i'm like you know what let's just give up she's like no dude like let's throw another party like we we got this <laughs> you know <laughs> so, uh but yeah i mean it, it's definitely challenging you know i i, I will admit it's challenging but Uh, it's great. You know, you have a good support system and you love what you do. You know, that's all that matters. Yeah, the, that's the most important part, having the support system. Because you can't do it alone. You need to have yeah. people by your side that are going to yeah, be definitely. like, you know what? You're doing great. Like, my dad is my number one fan because he's, he's been in the industry like his whole life. And he still DJs and he thinks like I'm a superstar. That's you awesome. Know? That's <laughs> so, so like, cool. Uh, it's so cool, you know, to have that support from family members, from your friends. So, yeah, we're fortunate to have that. It's magical. Cool. It's magical. What would you say, Omar? Do you have anything to add I to mean, that? I mean, I agree with both of you. I mean, like, my dad, he was in the music industry, too. And yep, he sees right. me the same way as you. Like, every time I go out, he's like, I'll be there. And I see him on the freaking with this camera, you know? Yeah. Like, it's awesome, you know? It's true. Yeah, it's he... a lot of love, though. I, like, I got a lot of support from family, friends, you know, and my wife as well, you know? So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, support. So, I want to know, what are your thoughts on San Diego's electronic music community? You can start with 
like the good parts and something that needs improvement? Uh, so what I was alluding to, um, you know, off the air a little while ago was, um, you know, the difficulty in bringing the community together. Um, it seems like other parts of the country um, and even around the world, a lot of DJs and producers are a little bit more united, for lack of better words. Uh, it seems that San Diego really lacks that community aspect in terms of like wanting to work together to build something uh, as a community. Um, I think, um, you know, and, and some people might scoff at, at this, but there's a lot of people that just, you know, don't want to work with each other. And, and, you know, I've attempted to bring people together in the past and, you know, there's a couple of groups out there and it's just, everyone just kind of seems like they're in it for themselves. And, and, you know, uh, I really hope that we can change that here soon in San Diego, especially in San Diego, because this is a, uh, it's becoming a big Mecca for electronic music. I mean, we have uh, festivals like the West Coast uh, uh, Weekender mm -hmm. that we were talking about. Uh, we have Cross Festival. Uh, you know, we have, um, you know, the Hard Rock events. I mean, uh, you know, we have the the, um, the Pride parties. I mean, you name it. I mean, there's just so much, you know, awesome, you know, awesomeness happening in San Diego. Yeah. But it seems like everyone's just kind of in their own niche group versus all of us coming together to create something in unison. You know, I think that's the biggest challenge we have in San Diego. How right do you now. think we can make it happen then? Honestly, I think if just people just put their egos aside. That's, yep. That's it. Yep. You know, just put put the egos aside, you know, and, and that's it. You know, come together, humble, you know, humble yourself, you know. Okay. And, um, you know, I think I, I'll admit too, I've been in that position where, you know, we've thrown some big shows with some big artists, you know, and, you know, I've, I've gotten a little hot-headed or for lack of better words it happens to all of us you know all of them it happens to all of us and um you know it's just it's all about putting that ego aside and saying you know what well, uh, let's do this together because we'll be stronger together yeah. uh versus competing against each other yeah, that's got to stop we're already like a really small community if you think yes. about it so if we're you know always fighting or all, all the stuff that happens behind the scenes like i know about it you know i've interviewed all, so many people in the scene mm -hmm. and that's always like the same thing that people bring up like yeah. that issue the collaboration issue mm -hmm. but i think it's gonna keep happening like unfortunately because not a lot of yeah. people are in the same state of mind where they can be open about it and they can leave their egos on the side i mean it's easy when you're in a position of power where you feel like you're so freaking cool like right. you know you want to do every, do it all by yourself but it's hard it's hard to like, stay humble for a lot of people it, it definitely is you know and, and again like you, you hit it on the head it's just uh, it, it's hard when you start to get into those bigger events and you see the you know a uh, little success and all that and you kind of get your feet wet uh you know i will admit like it, it does kind of like you know bring that ego out in you but uh, i think that if we all just you know put that aside and we come together i think we can do something and um you know it's just we've kind of been staying in our own little bubble the last few years because just because of that reason you know and um you know we're over that we, we want to we want to work with everybody yeah. honestly yeah please, please definitely add more to that. i mean yeah i mean right now like we've we've been in well like a few weeks like, like in october i did our first underground event in north county it was like cool to have our friends show up and all that but um definitely like next year we want to do something bigger you know what i mean and especially involve more people from the community um in the house community and the techno community as well you know just have more people involved because <clears throat> exactly what Casa said like if we don't work as a team you know we're going to be pushing each other off you know like we're not all gonna we all have the same vision we all want the same vision but we're all just <clears throat> we don't have the right uh i guess i guess you're right mindset. too like the mindset everybody's not in the right mindset yet well, so yeah well i hope that we can spark something in people whoever is listening or watching us right now yes and yeah to everyone that's watching, you know, well, let's, let's come together. That's the whole point of why I'm doing this show. So we can all kind of empathize with one another, like learn from our, our struggles. And we're all kind of like in the same path, like in the same, the, the same reasons why. So thanks for that input. And now it's time to go on the human experience section all where right. I'm going to ask you stuff about your mind. And I'm going to ask one, one each. So Sounds all good. Right. Cool. Yeah. So I guess I'll start with you. What are you most grateful for in your life right now? Uh, I hate to sound cheesy, but I'm just, I'm just grateful for my daughter. You know, she really has changed the way I, I, I view life and, and, you know, has given me the strength and the courage to keep going. And, you know, when I'm in there, you know, at my home studio playing my beats, like she's my number one fan, you know, and her jumper <laughs> and all that. So and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I, I mean, I just, I can't think of anything else at the moment, but, you know, it's really been a big blessing and a big uh, encouragement having my daughter in my life for sure. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. now it's your turn how do you stay grounded when you feel overwhelmed 
Um, well, usually I just, I mean, I try to stay around my family as much as I can, you know. Um, I, I left my job last year. Uh, it was like a full-time job for like, I was there for like seven years. <clears throat> and I left that job so I could be more, ha so I could have more time with my mom and my sister and my dad and just everybody. Because um, I felt like, it wasn't that it was, I felt like my job was like kind of, like I said, I was feeling soulless there. And mm -hmm. um, once I did that, like I feel, really felt that change of um, like mindset. Like I wasn't so like, oh, like this is the way it's supposed to be and like, I don't know. It was weird, but definitely um, just being around my family as much as I can, and my wife, and I love that my brother-in-law, and yeah, yeah every my, my dogs, my cat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shout right. out to my cats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you enjoy about adulthood? Wow, <laughs> I don't enjoy anything about adulthood. I wish I could just go back and be a Toys R Us kid my whole life. Dang. You know, I just. Uh, I mean, for me personally, everyone that knows me, like, I'm just a big kid. You know, I like, I'm all about having a good time. I don't take yeah. life too serious. You know, I joke around a lot, you know, and uh, my family knows me as like that, just that big giant kid, you know, like I'm always just making jokes and having a good time. And that's what it's about. You, you know, have the, to. You have you to. You have to. You have to enjoy life. Like, you can't yeah. let age define totally. who you are. I mean, yeah, it is part of you. Like, you're growing. Like, that's and unavoidable but like your essence like the way that you are like will stay like that forever you know forever like, yeah. when you see like when you see like old people at raves i'm like that's gonna be me dude totally <laughs> i mean that that is it's, you know that's it's, gonna be me that's all for of us. sure i'm, yeah, I'm in this for the long run for, yeah, yeah. For, for a long time not a good time yeah okay <laughs> so right. what is your definition of success wow that's funny um i feel like success i mean as far as to me it's just being happy with what you're doing, you know what I mean? It's pretty much it. Like, if that's success to me. Like, I don't think it can really, I don't know how else to define it, you know what I mean? Uh, that's what success. Yeah, I agree. I agree, yeah, I agree too. So when was the last time you tried something new? So, um, believe it or not, I, I try to try something new all the time, you know? So, like, uh, earlier today, uh, I tried a new haircut. So I don't know if you guys oh, know that. Okay. <laughs> so I try to do haircut That's to see cool. how that works. Um, you know, but I think it's important to like get out of your comfort zone and try new things yeah, all the time, whether time. it's food, whether it's music, um, you know, anything in general, you know, just getting out there and trying new things. Uh, it should be a goal for everybody, I think. Yes, I, I agree 100 percent. I love to experiment with everything. So I <laughs> feel you. And oh, yeah, it's your turn. So <laughs> what do you think you could never, ever give up? Oh, that's a good one. Dang. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> There's a lot of things I would give up. <laughs> but just one. Okay. Well, how about a top three to make it easier on you? There we go. All right. Well, uh, my drum set for sure. <laughs> drum set. That's, that's number a good one. <laughs> uh,. I guess just my drums. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just narrow it down to one thing. <laughs> I was like, ah, so many, I can't top three that. That was the first thing that came to your mind. It's valid. <laughs> yeah, because it's still up. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, what do you think? Oh, what do you say what's on your mind all the time? I do, and I think that tends to get me in trouble. Um, you know, I, I speak my mind a lot before I think. And, um, you know, a lot of people that know me personally, uh, sometimes I come off as rude or uh impolite or I don't, I don't know but uh i i think that uh, i speak my mind a lot without thinking for sure yeah sometimes <laughs> you kind of have to <laughs> <laughs> okay so do you think the way that someone looks on the outside describes them on the inside as well no not at all mm -hmm. no I, you gotta get to know the inside of them i know. agree yeah all right do you think technology is making us dumber or smarter <laughs> <laughs> so technology uh that's a double-edged sword yeah. to me because um it has been very helpful you know especially in the music community and all that um you know in terms of like throwing events and, and organizing events it's been very helpful it's a helpful tool and resource for marketing and, and bringing people together and all that stuff but i also think that people are slaves to technology now and are, are uh, heavily relying on like social media mm -hmm. to uh, to essentially determine who they are as people and individuals. 
Um, and I just want to say this to you know anybody going through anything like that. You know, social media does not determine who you are. You know, for the most part, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that uh, we should all do a better job of, of you know, having some social media time, but also having the real quality yeah. time. You Being know? able to detach from it. Exactly. Like, come back to reality and like realize that people provide like an image that they want us to see. Really. Right. You know? Right. That's, yeah. that's not reality. That's no. just highlights of the best parts of your life the best right. parts of your life you I mean, know let's be real i don't like to post my personal stuff like when i when i'm struggling or something i don't right. think people need to know that definitely you know? right it's personal, it's personal. Yeah, I, know. I mean some people like to post everything yeah. you know but I'm yeah, not, yeah i'm not that type of person <laughs> yeah neither am i i'm not i'm not one of those people yeah. i think once or twice maybe in like the last like 10 years i've had social media i've done something but yeah, I try to stay away from, you yeah, know, you, posting your personal stuff. Yeah, you don't there. want something I to agree. bite you in the, mm-hmm. in the butt. In the, but, yeah, later in life, now, like, yeah. dude, you said this. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's time for the scarlet letter. You're going to have to choose an envelope. Both yes. Of you. All right. All right, cool. Let's see. So, uh, Open it. We just choose uh, one? or Yeah, just one. Okay. Open it and answer the question. It could be a funny okay. question or a deep question. We'll never know until you open it. Oh, we both get one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm so glad I made extra because I was just going to bring one. So yes. It was meant to be. Cool. It was meant to be. I love the scarlet yeah, like emblem so cool. you have yeah, on there. Yeah, you can That's keep it. That's super cool. Check that out, guys. I'm definitely going to keep that. <laughs> Dope. All right. Oh, there you go. Just dive right in here. Uh, do you want me to read it out loud? Or? Yeah, yeah. All right. If you could make a rule for a day and everyone had to follow it, what would it be? <sighs> Ask a stranger how their day is going genuinely. I like that. I'm going to do that tomorrow. That's it. Well, actually, I do that for for my job. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you, you do. But like a random stranger, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Random stranger. Uh, cool. Just to kind of add a little bit, I don't want to take away from all, but like, yeah, um, yeah. I personally like people think I'm super weird, but I'll, like, if I'm waiting in line somewhere at a store, or the supermarket, or something, I'll just spark up a conversation with a random stranger, and I'll just, hey, how's your day going? And some people respond, and some people don't. Yeah. And uh, you know, most of the time, people respond with like, dude, like you're the first person who's asked me how my day is going all day and you know and it's actually going bad or it's going great and you know i've had you know people once or twice tell me do like i was feeling really down and you talk to me and i feel better you know i like to do that with uh, people in the service industry like cashiers and servers because i know what it's like (laughs) yes i'm like how are you doing like yeah so i i can relate do you want to do you want to yeah tell me your your mine all right yeah yeah. Yeah. okay (laughs) what small act of kindness were you once shown that you will never forget and I was thinking about this as you're like, I didn't really get to listen. So I was like, ah. but I was like, I remember one time going to San Diego and like we had just shown up to this parking spot. We we're going to the music box. And I think I think you were at the music box that day and um, we parked and like right when we parked, some person came up. They're like, hey, you want our ticket? It's like going to be till tomorrow morning. I'm like, dope. Like, this is cool. So, I mean, I don't know. I think that's pretty kind, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's you know? nice. I mean, it's, it's like the small acts of kindness that you remember the most. Yeah. You know? Because it's yeah. like without intention. You just do it because you're being nice. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you yeah. so much for being here. I really enjoyed this interview. Yeah. Thank you for being here for the season finale and for all the valuable like insights that you brought. Like, really, I, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being likewise, here. Likewise. You know, we're yeah, we're mirror image yeah. of each other. You know, you're awesome. And uh, it's definitely an honor. We were super excited. And, you know, when you first told me about having me, I was like, dude, it's great. I, I'd love to come on and, uh, you know, bring, uh, you know, w- one of our guests and, uh, you know, shout out to, you know, his partner, J note, they're a duo as well, who DJ and, uh, she couldn't make it today, but, uh, I appreciate her as well. And the rest of the guys on the team, Tommy Maverick, uh, you know, Preston, uh, those guys that, you know, have been rolling with me these last few years and just been stuck, stuck with us. So thank yeah. you guys. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for everyone that's watching too. We'll be back in a few thank minutes to finalize the interview. So I'll see you in a bit.
You know, you know me and that high energy thumping yeah. house. Yeah. Always. Oh my gosh. Every every time that I finish the show, I'm like, I want to party, but then like, I have to go to work. <laughs> okay, y'all. So, do you have any upcoming events? Um. So, uh, other than uh, my residency on uh, Thursday nights at Les, um, that's it. You know, that's my main focus for right now. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear whether I'm going to be opening up uh, the main stage at the Hard Rock for New Year's. Uh, yeah. As soon as we know a little bit more about that, you guys should see some more promo. Okay. I've been there every year. It's just uh, I don't know how it's going to work out this year because I just had you know my little girl and stuff. So uh, I might back out of this one, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, but yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. just focusing on Les and uh, making that the staple house music night in San Diego, uh, along with making more music. What about you, O? Oh, well, on uh, this month, uh, well, me and my homegirl, Jano, we have an event uh, at Boar's on the 19th of December. We're going to be celebrating my birthday that day. Um, and then on uh, New Year's, we have a Pier Day Club down in Oceanside at Hello Betty's. That's that's going to be fun for New Year's Eve. Nice. And uh, yeah, I think the, and then uh, Les uh, on next week on Thursday at, on the 12th. Awesome. Yeah. So do you that's have any Les shout outs or anything that you'd like your fans to know? Yeah, I mean, shout outs to, uh, you know, all of my LGBT community out there in Hillcrest, which is nightclub. I love you guys. Everyone in there, you know, like I said, uh, Ryan, Lonella, Nicole, Scarlett, of course, hey. you know, AJ, you're the man. We appreciate you. Uh, Adrian, you know, you're always great on the lights, too. Appreciate you. Uh, you know, everybody out there. And then just uh, to all of our, our fam out there, uh, yeah. all of the yeah. people that have worked with us the last several years and kept yeah. supporting our vision. Uh, just thank you guys. We wouldn't be here without you. Much yeah. love. Yeah, much love. Bro. Yeah, shout out to my parents i love you guys i love my dad my mom she always listens to my show my family my friends which hi are mom like, hi dad yeah, my, <laughs> the, my friends which are like my extended family because i'm an only child you know um, <laughs> shout out to all the people that come up to me when i go out on events it's like are you scarlet letter i'm like yeah <laughs> it's, it's so amazing. weird it's so it's fun it's like it's kind of like it means that I'm making an impact and I just that makes me so happy because it means Absolutely. that I'm making a positive impact in my community and so thank you to all of you who have been supporting like you're all like keep it, making the show alive like you're all like the reason so I love all of you thank you shout out to you guys for being here no, thank everything you. like I'm, I'm just so happy and I'm so ready for the new year like it's, honestly so many great things are gonna happen like, next I year it's it. coming yeah. and by the way I'm gonna be uploading this on YouTube you already know and yep. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like once again, I'm gonna see you all at Rich's tonight. I hope, right? That's right. Techniche blackout Technish. party. Shout out to Rudy and John Velotti. You guys are the mans. You guys are the yeah. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Scarlet Letter Show, and YouTube. I'll see you guys next year. Yeah. Woo!